These are five Festival of Legend decks that I'm going to be playing in two days. We're going to go ahead and jump into today's Hearthstone topic, so if you like Hearthstone content, feel free to like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel to be notified about any of our future updates, because I'm going to be going immediately into this expansion with uh, with all my gears turning, all my gears running on full maximum efficiency. And speaking of maximum efficiency, if you're watching this video as soon as it's released, I am currently streaming on the Twitch channel over at twitch.tv slash clarkhellscream. So if you want to theorycraft some decks with me, go ahead and check out the Twitch stream because I am live right now. And let's get back to the video because I said we're going to jump right into it. Because I'm going to be playing in the theorycraft stream that is happening in the next two days. So that means that I have a lot of decks that I've been working with. I have been looking at the uh, at the core set and carefully analyzing what can work and what classes. And I'm not going to go ahead and spoil everything that I have found. But I will show you five decks that I am extremely excited to start playing in the next two days. Five different classes in order to give you guys an idea of how to start building your decks. As well as a good website to start building your decks on. Because right now the official play Hearthstone website is not the best one to build your decks on. So if you go over to hearthstonetopdecks.com and go over to their deck builders tab, they have already uh, organized all of the cards for you. With Every single card has been released, so we know 100% all the cards that we can work with with theory crafting. And they have already put together an extremely handy, extremely intuitive deck builder to where you can do pretty much anything by organizing by mechanic, mana cost, minion type, pretty much the whole nine yards. And it has all of the new cards that are going to be in the new core set as well as the new cards from the new expansion. So if you want to start theorycrafting your ideas, I would definitely check out hearthstonetopdecks.com in order to get uh, more access to up-to-date information without missing holes. But let's go ahead and check out what decks I am experimenting with right now because uh, I've got a lot of spicy ideas that I'm working with right now. And the biggest, uh, well, biggest deck that I have right now to show you is Big Hunter. And I have a Big Paladin deck that I will be working on, but it's not in this particular video. But Big Paladin is like one archetype that I'm really hoping can be good. I just haven't looked at all the cards in great detail yet. But I have, I, I will admit this. I don't like Hunter, but this was the first deck that I had made. Because the idea of being able to play uh, Strangle uh, Thorn Heart, and I'll go through all the new cards here in a second, uh, in case you guys are unfamiliar with what the new cards are. Uh, but this deck just looks extremely good on paper. And if you guys are familiar with how Cube Hunter used to be with uh, Kathrina uh, uh, Fleet Runner, I think, or something like that, recruit a beast from your deck essentially almost twice. And um, yeah, like that was an extremely powerful deck. You also had like early egg synergies in order to always threaten the early game. So this deck is kind of doing something a little bit similar. If we take a look at some of the new cards, it really does make sense why we're trying to push this style of archetype. And keep in mind, for all of these Theorycraft decks, I need to include at least 10 new cards. So this isn't going to be like card for card as optimal as uh, you want these decks to be. But this is going to be a good starting point to where we can see just how good cards like Thormantor Musician really are. As well as cards like Stranglethorn Heart. But I like the idea of putting this card in the deck just because it's an easy one drop. It synergizes with the beast that we have in the deck. As well as giving us like a one drop the buff with Doggy Biscuit because Doggy Biscuit is staying in the core set. One card that I believe I put in my deck if I remember correctly. I did not put this in the deck. But one thing I did really struggle uh, to put in this deck or not was Jungle Jammer. But the reason why I decided against it was because I decided to just go with the Sharn Saber. But this could be a really useful card in a different Hunter deck that cheats out uh, beasts in a different manner. But the other cards that I definitely wanted to keep were Mr. Mukla. I mean, this card is just going to be insane. Guaranteed mill, 10-10, stats, rush. Like, everything about this card is screaming S-tier card. And I'm can i I'm actually really excited to play Hunter for the first time in forever. I don't even have a 1,000 Hunter wins. The only class I don't even have a 1,000 wins with. And, well, I'm not going to get away with saying that anymore after I play this card. Because it is just S-tier, omega good. I think everyone has said this card is amazing. But one card I'm not very sold on is Banjo-Sore. Whenever this card attacks, draw a beast and gain its stats. This could be particularly good if we're able to make it to the late stages of the game, but something else to keep in mind is that there might be ways of being able to cheat this card out early because of a Sharn Saber. This is why I think that this works really well with this style of deck because it's pretty much what Big Beast Hunter is already with pulling out Mama Bears and pulling out Hydralodons, but now you're pulling out Banjosaurs and you're pulling out King Crushes, and there's also another really big beast to pull out here, Amplified Elec. Amplified Elec, I believe, is going to be almost a sleeper in this meta if, unless big decks are going to be extremely good. And there's a reason why I'm including Lorthamar in this deck is because imagine being able to double the stats on all of these cards and then do some kind of insane 
uh, pull turn or something like that. Like, the capabilities of this deck are be aggressive and pressure, and sometimes have consistency with drawing the weapon because we have instrument tech, which is probably one of the best cards Hunter could ask for. A lot of classes have been begging for a draw a weapon card, and Hunter is definitely one of them. So drawing your harpoon gun consistently, having a char and saber uh, in your mulligan is probably going to be number one, so you can get this kind of combo consistently. And then that way you're just pulling out these really big cards that have insane capability now to wrap up this because i have other decks to talk about i also included faithful companions and lorthamar so that way we have otk potential and you also have stranglethorn heart just because it's a new card and i want to see how busted this can actually be because the original idea of this deck was to use barbaric sorceress however after messing with the cards i thought it'd be better to put it into etc so that way if i do have the opportunity to play uh Mr. Mukla, fill up my opponent's hand with one mana spells, and then switch, uh, switch with uh, Barbaric Sorceress to get a one mana Stranglethorn Heart, then maybe that would be worth it, but I think hard running it in the deck is a little bit dissynergistic, because then you can't run cards like Tracking as effectively. You still have Theotar, and you still have Hydrolodon. Hydrolodon being in the side deck is because you don't want to revive this off of Strangleth uh, Stranglethorn Heart, but it's also because I want to play with the, with the more fun, more new cards, and Hydrolodon is just a card that, honestly, I don't like seeing, so he's just going to remain the side deck for now. Now, as we're going through these new decks, I will admit that they get even more spicy as we continue on, so each deck is going to get even spicier by the moment. But I would argue that this is probably my least spicy deck, however, I have a lot of hope that uh, a, a, some kind of tempo outcast demon hunter is going to be particularly useful because of how good cards like glavatar are and just how much synergy there seems to be with this style of deck and honestly there was one card that really made me want to start making uh make me want to start making a demon hunter decks honestly because this card right here i thought was was really really good guitar soloist if you control no other minions draw a spell a minion and a weapon and my idea behind this was to try and build an aggro deck to where you're just, flo you're just flooding out your cards, you're just playing as many things as possible, and then on turn 5, you can play Guitar Soloist, get more tempo, and just continue to pressure uh, uh, as much damage as you can, as long as you can. However, the list that I decided to settle on goes in a little bit of a different direction, because I saw a lot of more car a lot more cards like Illidari Studies that would fit Demon Hunter perfectly, especially with how good they are with Outcast cards. So there are a few cards I'm going to have to explain in order to really... Uh, show you guys the synergies that this kind of list can uh can honestly produce but just in simple terms this is a tempo um kind of minion based deck where you're always like playing things onto the board and just trying to kill your opponent as fast as possible so you have cards like kane sun fury and uh, g lag in order to just deal that last amount of damage uh Ven vengeful walloper if you guys don't remember is a uh, six mana five five rush card that reduces in cost for every outcast card you play. And there are so many different outcast cards. Calamity Grasp is uh, the new weapon, which I believe uh, gives you a another outcast card, and I believe also has an outcast effect on it. Apparently this isn't a new card, it's from, an, uh, it's from I think, March of the Lich King. Yeah, here it is. Add a random outcast card to your hand. Works pretty well in the deck, but that's not one of the new cards. If we look at the new cards, what is inside of it is one of the biggest sleepers that I believe is in this meta game right now, Snake Bite. And the only reason why I believe this is really good is because in combination with all of the mana cheating and cheap cards and cheap rush minions that uh, th that Demon Hunter can generate, I believe this is going to be an insane card, especially when you combine it with one of the new cards they literally just got called Security. So you summon essentially three uh, Outcast 1-1s, one uh, and then you are able to play Snake Bite, and that's already a 4-4 rush. And if you kill other minions, you can potentially make this into a 7-7. Seven, seven. So imagine being able to play two of these in one turn as early as, let's say, turn three. Because if you uh, remember what we had in the deck, we have Wayward Sage. So there's ways of being able to get some insane mana cheat combos by, like, turn one. Or honestly, by turn two, turn three. Because we've also got Eldari Studies in order to make the security cost even cheaper. So I have a lot of faith in what this deck can do. You have Rush the Stage in order to draw two uh, Rush cards. You have uh, Wretched Exile in order to give you even more Outcast cards. So there is some value generation in this deck, as well as um, uh, Feller and the Forgotten, the Outcast uh, Legendary that worked really well in the previous uh, expansion. But overall, I think that this deck has a few hoops that it has to go through. Number one, Control has to not be... Uh, 
that present on the ladder. Number two, this deck has to be able to consistently draw through itself, and I'm not really 100% sold on that. But overall, I think that Tempo Demon Hunter has a lot of potential. It's about finding the perfect list. If there's one thing that I know, good lord, I know that I can't change. And well, one thing that I'm wondering is if there's going to be any changes to this list, because this looks like a pretty solid list if Rogue is able to OTK faster than people are anticipating. So here's the idea. Play Freebird, and if you don't know what Freebird is, then number one, you need to check out, um, you know, you, you, you need to do your research on uh, classic rock um, uh, anthems, I guess is the best way to put it. But Freebird is probably going to be one of the most experimented card, uh, one of the most experimented cards when the cards go live, because this is just, the potential of this card is insane depending on what you're using it in, and well, Rogues have Shadow Step, so this is going to be utilized very highly in that aspect. So charge, battle cry, gain plus one, plus one for every other free bird that you've played. The whole point of this deck is just to play free bird as many times as possible. And because you have Evel en uh, eh, blah, blah, blah. Elven Minstrel, blah, blah, blah. Elven Minstrel coming back into the fray, there is a consistent way of being able to draw your minions. And if you look at this deck, this deck literally has no minions except for free bird. Now, I was originally trying to put a ghoul, a, a um, an, a ghoulish alchemist in this deck in order to make like potion belts potentially cause a zero, and there might even be potential to put like putricide in the deck for the same reason. But I want to see just how good this style of deck can work already, and the main reason why I have a lot of faith in it is because if you have Freebird on the field, you can either cheat it out by playing Prep Bone into two mana Freebird, or if uh you already have Shadow Stepped a Freebird for two mana, you can play it. For two mana and then do a prep bone combo on your opponent's minion and then play bounce around to make it cost one mana so like bounce around is one card that i believe that a lot of people uh do not have a lot of faith in in particular and in all honesty i really don't have a lot of faith in this card but if you are able to produce some kind of combo with this because of cheating this out with either prep or with bone for example then that has a lot of potential going for it. And I believe that maybe Freebird is the way to make that potential really rise. And there might even be potential with, like, Beatboxer, depending on what exactly the meta is looking like, because some people are scared of this card. And one more new card that we need to talk about is Record Scratcher. We do have Mic Drop in the deck. It's just draw two cards. Nothing really uh, impressive about that. But being able to refresh Mana Crystals, I think might be insane. But the one thing that's kind of holding this deck back is there's not that many combo cards like there there is uh ghostly strike gone fishing and uh i believe yeah an elven menstrual and as well as your shadow demises but there's really not all too many combo cards in this deck outside of like mic drop uh being like the new card so maybe this deck has a lot of potential for it cheat death is a, a one more card that i have to point out because this gives us a reason to just tempo free bird and if our opponent doesn't clear it then we can easily shadow step it or they'll give us the shadow stepped free bird so i think this deck has a lot of potential and it's really scary how th this bird may not be caged if it goes out of control this next one goes out to all the warrior mains out there because i have to admit i have been having a lot of fun building a potential uh tony warrior deck but that's only because I'm really fixating on trying to perfect the perfect Tony combo. But just in case you guys aren't familiar with what exactly I'm talking about, uh, the whole point of this deck is to play Fire of Shinazaris in order to transform your deck, and then you play Tony King of Piracy in order to swap it over to your opponent's side. So then that way, uh, if they end up killing it, they end up getting your deck of the Fire of Shinazaris, which is honestly what you want. You want this card to die, so that way they have the newly transformed deck. So that way, when you end up playing, uh, when you're playing your Steam Cleaner, it absolutely, well, steams, Steam Cleans the entire house. Like, there is, there is no way to come back from this unless they bring back, like, Kazakasan and you are somehow playing cards from the past. Like, it's, it's the ultimate, just, I guess, uh, grief combo that's, a, that's available in Hearthstone right now. And I'm hoping that this isn't the only way to play Warrior, but I have a lot of different Warrior ideas that I want to show you guys, but this is just the, the bread and butter that I've really been trying to perfect right now because there are two different ways that uh, I've been, been envisioning uh, being able to do this. And one of them was actually recommended by somebody in chat. So guys, if you, if you have any ideas, please give them to me because the smallest idea might give me that brain blast moment in order to, per in order to predict the best deck in Hearthstone. And well, let me talk about my first idea before I tell you about the brain blast moment. 
So the idea with this first deck is, you know, we're playing a lot of mechs. Why not just go with a deck that's always pressuring with mech cards and always trying to just like draw cards and constantly play for the board versus going for like a control deck or like a weird like stall deck that isn't doing very much. My idea was just to play a bunch of mechs because cards like Dynamatic coming back are really, really interesting. And I think that Dynamatic is probably one of the best tools that Warrior could ask for, especially when you pair it with cards like Zilliax. So I absolutely needed to put these cards inside the deck. So I decided to flesh this out with more cards that are mechs, like uh, Annoying Fan works really well in this kind of deck because you can choose one card and prevent them from being able to attack it in the early game, and that seems particularly powerful in a deck that just wants to stall one or two turns every now and again. Uh, Frequency Oscillator makes your next card cost one, uh, next your mechs, yeah. Make sure next mech costs one mana less, and trust me, we'll come back to this, it's very important. But the whole idea of this deck is to eventually play Audio Amplifier in order to get yourself to 11 mana. Because there are two ways to combo with this deck. One, the original combo that I was telling you about where you do the Tony Flame combo and then play Steam Cleaner. But there is a way to potentially do this all in one turn. It's a bit of a setup though, and I'm not sure if this is going to be the best way to do it, but keep in mind, this was my first iteration of the deck, and I was I was shooting for the moon in all honesty. So the idea to be able to do this all in one turn is if you have 11 mana because of audio amplifier, and if you've set up a frequency oscillator in order to make your next mech cost one less, as well as having Kotohide Drum Kit at 5 damage, which really isn't that complicated to do because you just need to hear power a couple of times. And in all honesty, um, the Quillbore might work in this deck and I might squeeze it in here. Because with the Quillbore, if you hear power twice, that sets the Kotohide to 5 damage. Because it's about each time you armor up. So if you armor up, the Quillbore gives you more armor. That counts, I believe, two different times because it's two different sequences of armor being triggered. So, getting this to 5 damage isn't all too important, but why do we want it for 5 damage? Why, why, why do we want it for 5, oh, oh, wait a minute, it needs to be 6 damage. Okay, it needs to be 6 damage. Point is, you can, you can set up the Kodo Hide to where, uh, you can kill Tony with it, with the Death Rattle, and then you can trigger the Steam Cleaner all in one turn. A again, I know, I know this is a complicated setup, guys, but I was shooting for the moon on possibilities, not on actual consistency. That's where this next deck. That's where this next deck comes into play because this is probably the more consistent way of being able to pull this off. And somebody, very very smart individual, was like, "What if we just played only spells and played uh, important minions? So that way, when we when we play Chorus Rift, it will draw the important cards, and we can just still play exactly what we want to play with Warrior with removal and big armor cards. That has a lot of potential in my eyes, and I might even need to fit in a um, oh god, what's it called? A uh. The, the tradable armor card, I, I'm blanking on its name right now, Trade Plate or something like that. Because that could be decent for just like, a, you know, a good tradable card and for uh, Synergy with Shield Slam. But this is the, uh, the, uh, the idea of the deck that I have at the moment. You have three minions in this deck because you always want to keep Weaponsmith or Weapons Expert in order to draw your Kotohide Drum Kit as quickly as possible. But your Course Rifts, uh, you have potentially three or four of them depending on how you play them. Because if you play Chorus Rift into... Um, uh, into Verse Rift, you get to play Chorus Rift twice, so I feel like the Rift cards are kind of getting a lot of hate, because drawing minion cards and being able to tutor specific cards are always powerful, it's just a matter of what deck that they're going to fit into, and well, the only minions in this deck are the key co are the are the key cards for the combo, so once you eventually have your Fire of Shinazaris just naturally drawn, you can just play this combo. I think this has a ton of potential, and in all honesty, this might be the very first deck that I play, but this next deck looks so perfect that I might just have to play it first because I'm going to be the first player to pop off this particular combo. The deck that I am most excited to play right now, and yes, I know I'm a toxic gamer, it's Combo Unholy Death Knight. I know, it doesn't sound right because this is only an aggro, uh, an aggro class, right? Well, who knows, maybe this deck can go under some changes to where it kind of goes in a different direction a little bit. And it's all because cards like Mosh Pit, Death Growl, as well as Bone Shredder are just key cards in order to make this Death Knight deck uh, go ahead and it just sing its metal praises. I was trying to come up with a pun there, but I'm just extremely excited and I, and I just cannot contain my excitement anymore. So let's go through the new cards because it's really important. Choose a minion, spread its Death Rattle to adjacent minions. 
You saw the naval mine, right? You can put two and two together. The whole point of this deck is to is to mul uh, is to completely break naval mine and hopefully get this card either banned or nerfed one way or another. So if I end up getting naval mine nerfed, you're welcome. You're welcome, Hearthstone. But another reason why this deck looks particularly promising is because you have the capability of being able to give any minion and death knight reborn. So this works in all of the tribes. I'll let you know right now. I have a death knight deck for every single rune tribe. Uh, and this card fits in, I think, in every single deck, uh, every single deck except for one. So this card looks particularly powerful because death frontal synergies are what Death Knight is known for, and it's just about what particularly you want to use this for. And well, Naval Mine is the first idea that you might be thinking of, but it's not the main reason why I'm doing this. The main reason why I'm doing it is Cagehead, and if you don't know Cagehead, then oh boy, are you in for a treat. Um, but the, before we get to Cagehead. Uh, Bone Shredder. Battlecry, spend five corpses to trigger and gain the death rattle of a friend of a random friendly minion that died this game. As much as I want to use this with Cage Head, it's probably not likely to happen because we have to play Cage Head, have him die, and then play this card as well. So it, it probably is just good to also have naval mines in the mix, so that way you're always dealing damage. And when you have cards like Death Growl, if you have any minions on the field, and trust me, we have ways of being able to stick minions, this card can literally just be uh, six mana, give your minions 12 damage and death rattles, and that just seems utterly broken to me. But the main reason why we're doing this deck is because Cagehead. I want to hopefully do a combo where I play Cagehead, it dies, and then I do the Bone Shredder combo as early as possible in order to summon as many Blight Boars as possible. Yeah, you could go for, like, an, an instant combo where it builds up a board of 9-9s nine that your opponent can't deal with because they have Taunt, but where's the fun and glory in that? I want to hit face immediately with this uh with this card so now that we've seen the new cards you can kind of look at this deck in a little bit of a new light and in all honesty i might need to cut the the chill far and barren just because i don't want the synergies with the uh with the bone shredder so with that out of the mind go ahead and cut this card out of your mind and maybe put in like a blight fang or something but regardless uh this deck works really really well in my eyes the one thing we can't run is the two three that summons one threes because we don't want to spend too many corpses so we're kind of all in on like this rancher uh nerubian swarm guard combo to build up as many corpses as possible but another key idea to play this deck and this is why i'm so excited for it i've thought of so many different options is that this gives us a reason to play plague grain like we can play plague grain on turn one it's a naval mine on turn two most opponents probably aren't going to clear it but if your opponent is going to clear it, then you could play Mosh Pit instead on turn two, and then Naval Mine on turn three in order to give it Reborn immediately. Most people probably aren't even going to just screw with it because they don't want to take the damage, which means on turn four, you can play Cover Artist, which becomes a 3-3 copy of the Naval Mine, and then also has the Reborn attached to it. So that is a perfect 1-2-3-4 curve that, I mean, hey man, you play Bone Shredder next. Uh, I, th I think the corpse count is isn't high enough for Bone Shredder to be useful then. But, I mean, that's just a lot of potential already. And I wanted to put cards like Unholy Frenzy uh, and Grave Strength in the deck, but I just couldn't find the slotting for them, so I decided to just put them in ETC, so that way I can maybe get value out of these cards. Because running Unholy Frenzy in a deck with Naval Mine might make a lot of sense, but for now I've just got Plague Strikes in order to deal with my opponent's minions as well as being able to kill the Naval Mine. But the other reason why Plague Strike works particularly well is because you can kill your own cage head with it if you're going up against an opponent that doesn't kill the minion when you play it on an empty board. So there's a lot of potential with this deck, as well as Bone Lord. I haven't, I haven't even talked about the Bone Lord. Oh my god, do you guys see how hard I worked on this deck? Outside of the Chillfire and Baron, that's the only card that I need to cut from this. But there's just so much potential if you end up killing your Bone Lord into cage head and then you have the bone shredder combo ready to go if you've already got like a bunch of one ones because of the rancher there are so many ways that this deck could go but this is probably the most copium way that i'm hoping the deck can be played because this looks like a it just looks like a lot of fun and unholy death knight is finally getting support that is not just hit face play minions play grave strength but there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are five, technically six decks that uh, I have shown you today that I will be playing in the next two days. So make sure you guys go over to twitch.tv slash Clark Hellscream to check out the stream when we are live with the new cards because I will be playing from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Pacific time uh, on the 5th of April. So yeah, make sure you're there for the Theorycraft stream. And if you have any ideas of what I should play, come by the Discord, um, leave a deck down below, an idea that you might have because I'm still going to be playing... A lot of hearthstone these next couple of days to get my brain uh to get my brain moving and honestly if you're watching this video right now i am probably streaming live 
So come by the Twitch stream, hang out with us, give us some ideas, and maybe you'll see your favorite deck or your idea on the stream in two days. So thank you guys so much for making it to the end of this video, and we'll see you for the next one.